Hey friend, Brandon here. Four years ago, Google joined the smart home speaker market alongside the Amazon Alexa with their Google Home. And today, I finally get to check out their follow-up to it from an audio engineer's perspective. Let's talk about it because this is Tech Today. This video is supported by Webull, a free stock trading platform with extended trading hours and tons of great tools. Get two free stocks, both of which are valued from a minimum of $8 all the way up to $1,600 when you deposit at least $100 or more into a new account. That's a minimum 16% return on your investment and you can withdraw it all when you're done without penalty. It's a no brainer. Click the link in the description to get started. Okay, so the Nest Audio is a really great smart home speaker that has the Google Assistant built into it. What's interesting about it is that it's directional. So it's not a 360 speaker. So it's not like a Bluetooth speaker that you can carry around with you. The idea is that you're probably putting it on a dresser or some sort of thing against the wall and it's gonna point in a certain direction rather than some place in the middle of your room. And the great thing is, is that the Google Assistant allows you to control different things in your smart home. Wow, okay. This thing is way, 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 way smaller than I was expecting. Oh, dang. This thing's pretty heavy. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. And you have a plug in here. Very clean, minimal, soft, elegant, minimal yeah. plug. And you just have some instructions and stuff in there. I'm gonna go get like a scale or a level because this thing feels a bit chunky. 1,175 grams. It's pretty hefty. Two pounds, nine and a half ounces. Just from the sheer weight of it, it feels extremely dense. If you uh, got into an argument, and uh, while well, you are on the receiving end of this being thrown at you, you'd probably lose. <laughs> you can see that the cloth is not loose or anything. Feels real nice, a little ASMR for you. I think I have a channel for that or something, which you can check out over here. <laughs> It comes in charcoal, chalk, sand, which is what I have here, sage, and sky. This is a really muted color. It would easily blend into your environment. I kinda wanna try out that sky option though. On the back, you have a manual toggle switch for the microphone. A little nice subtle G logo there for Google. And then a power plug there. Unfortunately, there's no aux jack, which is a bit of a bummer for me, especially because there's no Chromecast audio anymore. So that means that you can't hook up anything to it physically. You can connect to it, of course, over Bluetooth or casting to it. Also inside of the Nest Audio is a 75 millimeter woofer. That's the larger speaker. And that allows you to have more of the low ends. And then you have a 19 millimeter tweeter or, or like, a, like a bird, a tweet tweet. That's the higher end for frequencies on the speaker. Now for size comparison, here's the original Google Home and here is the new Nest Audio, the sequel to it. So it's quite a bit bigger, but quite a bit thinner. It kind of looks like a really heavy pillow in a weird way. And then here you have your Home Hub. So it's kind of a little bit bigger than the display. Then you have your Google Home Mini, a classic, right? I'm curious how many of you have a bunch of these laying around or even like extra ones. I have extra ones that I just gift to family members and friends and stuff. Man, that design language of Google, just so minimal. <laughs> intended to not be loud or braggadocious, but just blend in. It's so interesting. And then the big boy, Nest Hub Max. One thing that I'm interested to see how, how it compares in terms of sound, this thing's huge. One thing to note about this is that you have the ability to not only control your smart home uh, with it, but you can also broadcast to other smart speakers, Google Home speakers or Nest Home, whatever you wanna call it now. Uh, you can broadcast to multiple speakers throughout your home. So if you have Google Home Minis and all these other different things, you can uh, say dinner's ready and it'll uh, broadcast all them. And if you're so inclined and you have people who also use Duo, you can make Duo calls with it as well. And that's especially nice when you have the display speakers because you can have that whole video interaction. We have four LED lights that light up there, a classic Google Home or Nest Home design and look. There's a touch control somewhere. I think it's up here. Oh, yep. Okay, it already sounds quite full. I'm impressed. Hi. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. Now what's really neat is that you can actually pair two of these together and you can get a stereo sound with it. One thing that happens with speakers, each time you add an additional speaker of the same type together, you will have an increase of three decibels. So you can just pack a whole bunch of these and every single time you add an additional speaker, three decibels, three decibels. The other thing you can do is you can set up for specific rooms. Hello, I'm talking. 
The other thing you can do is you can assign it to different rooms. So you can play music and say, hey, play it in you know, the living room and it'll play in there. You can also have it play throughout the whole entire house. So if you have multiple Google Homes or Nest Homes, Nest Audios, oh my gosh, all the names. You have multiple Nest Audios throughout the entire house. You can actually have it broadcast throughout the whole entire house. It does not have a battery in it. You have to have it plugged in. So it makes even more sense for it to be directional rather than like a, a Bluetooth speaker that has a battery built in. That would be one of the key differentiators between the Nest Audio and a Sonos device. But how often, if you really think about it, do you set your speaker up in your house and move it around? I just really haven't done that myself personally. Maybe you're different, but most of the time I just set it on the shelf and it blends in the way that I want it to and it works the way that I want it to. And then that's it. Having it plugged in makes a lot of sense. This is not something that you bring to the beach. This is something that you set up in your house and then for the most part, just leave it there. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to listen to a bunch of different songs I use for my audio tests. There's only one song that I can play in a YouTube video because of copyright stuff, but if you want to link to the playlist I'm using, uh, it's down below in the description. And of course, I'm gonna compare it with all these other devices. It'll be interesting to see how far we have advanced from the original Google Home. Apparently, it's 75% louder than this Google Home and it has 50% stronger bass. And this is the song that we'll use to compare all the different speakers to each other. Now, one song that I always test out is this song from the Tron soundtrack by Daft Punk. It's a song called Solar Sailor. It has this certain sub-frequency note that it hits that a lot of speakers really have a hard time replicating. It, it either kind of makes it sound like the, the audio just drops out because it can't replicate that low frequency or it overwhelms speakers. So let's see how it fares. Yeah, so the thing that I'm hearing is, is what I would have expected for a speaker of this size. You really don't hear that note. It kind of disappears. It has some overtones to, in the song so you can recognize that there's a note there, but you don't feel any of it. So here's something that's interesting about sound. When you have lower frequencies, you can actually step further away from the speaker and it'll actually sound louder. That's because of the way waveforms work. It's a little bit wider. You can put your ear right next to the speaker itself and you'll hear a lot of the higher frequencies, but in terms of the lower frequencies, it's just more pronounced the further away you're from it. Now, to be clear, you can still hear a little bit that one note in Solar Sailor. You just have to turn the volume down just a little bit more and you might be able to feel it a little bit it, but it's just not as uh, even in terms of all the other notes that it's playing. So something that I'm noticing is that it sounds the best maybe two taps down from the top of the volume, at least for most songs. Now there are some songs that are really, really bass heavy and it actually sounds kind of flubby or chunky when you have it at something else other than the max volume. The max volume is just gonna help out the high end a little bit to come through. When you turn it down a little bit from the max volume, the low end has room to come out. It has a little bit more space. When you turn it up higher, it's kind of compressing it because it's trying to not overwhelm the speaker so it doesn't have as much room to, to really accentuate itself. <laughs> So this could be potentially an unsatisfactory answer for you, but the volume that you should choose really depends on the song. On most songs so far that I can tell, it is two taps down from the max volume. But some of them, if you're a really big bass head and it's mixed a certain way, you might wanna turn it up all the way, which is something that I normally wouldn't say as an audio engineer, but this doesn't seem overly, overly loud. But this doesn't feel like it's super duper loud that's gonna mess up your hearing, but um, Let's find out. The decibel level on the Nest Audio is 97.6 on average. Oddly, in my comparison test, the original Google Home came out louder. Interesting. So the one thing I can already tell from the original Google Home is that it sounds really kind of honky in the mid-range and it's like there's a, a blanket over it or it's shooting into, I don't know, a cup. <laughs> I 
I mean, the Nest Home Mini is exactly what you would probably expect. It's not really full. It's not really clear on the high end. It's more mid-rangey because it's primarily something that you would use to speak to and hear information from. You kind of put it all around your house and you just want information. You're not really listening to it for music. So they emphasize the voice, which is primarily in that mid-range to high mids. <laughs> So one thing to note is that the speaker on the Nest Hubs is on the back. If you know anything about speakers, pointing it away from you is not the greatest sound. <laughs> now the interesting thing about the Nest Hub Max when you look at the lineup is that it is the comparable to the Nest Audio but with a display. So you have your Nest Hub Mini with your Google Home Mini and then you have your Nest Hub Max with your Nest Audio. <laughs> Oh, this is interesting. The Nest Hub Max has a much louder volume and way more bass actually, but at the expense of just being a big mess. With it facing away from you and likely against a wall, they're trying to get as much volume as possible and as much bass as possible, and it just doesn't sound good. It just sounds distorted and muddy and honky and just bad. And that's because it's really trying to do too much in a less than ideal setup, you know, facing away from you. This, on the other hand, sounds incredibly clear. It's not as loud and it's not as bassy, but just because you have more bass doesn't mean it's actually better. You lose all that clarity with how overwhelmingly bassy this ends up being. I guess the best way I could describe it is that this is like having a kid who is coloring all over the place with a ton of different colors with a crayon and it, you know, that's fun and great and all and there's probably more crayon on it, but this is like a kid who is coloring within the lines. So it's sound design and build and everything is intentional. It's clear, it's focused, it's relatively full. It's definitely not gonna be the biggest, bassiest, full sounding speaker out there, but it's really good. So for $100, this is a great deal. And one thing that I would point out is if you buy it on the Google store, if you buy them in pairs, you'll get an extra $20 off. Now I don't have the Google Home Max available. I do have a review for that that you can check out up here. As a whole, my experience with that one was that it didn't really sound all that great. It was really muddy, really tubby and all that other stuff, just really big. The whole room EQ thing didn't really work either. So take that for what you will. So one thing I wanna do is try out these other Bluetooth speakers I have. They're the iLoud uh, monitors. I'm curious now to find out how good one of these speakers that you can use for mixing on, on the go, how well it compares to this $99 speaker. So we're gonna go from a perceptive level, which is I understand is not the most scientific, but for a practical sense, this will be more helpful, I guess. It's hard to get it from a technical level because if we go for the technical level, this is gonna sound way, way louder because it has way more bandwidth, so to speak. There's way more low end, way more high end. So it just sounds louder because it has more of a frequency range. <laughs> Obviously, the iLouds do end up sounding better as a whole. There's a little bit more range, high end, the air that I was talking about that's missing from the Nest Audio, and some of the low sub frequencies. But the price of the iLouds is way different. The iLouds as a pair go for $300, and that does end up being about a $100 difference. But interestingly enough, it's not a drastic difference between two of the Nest Audios. This is an incredible product at a really affordable price for what it's offering. I think Google did a fantastic job job. Way to go. I can't wait to see more of these. Hopefully uh, you can bring that over into things like the Nest Hub Max or the other devices as well. After listening to this and comparing it with a bunch of other different devices, I'm really not sure what purpose there is for a Sonos device. The only thing that I can think of is the fact that it's wireless and you can carry it around wherever you want because there's a built-in battery. The cheapest option for a Sonos speaker is $179. Their more popular ones are like $300. So at that rate, I really can't suggest a Sonos. This makes a lot of sense. And you have the benefit of a Google ecosystem with a Google Assistant. So if you wanna pick up any of the things that I mentioned in this video, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. It does help support the channel. And what do you think about the Nest Audio? Are you planning on picking one up? Do you wanna have one that's sounds good like this, but has it in a display like I do. Honestly, I'd rather have displays than individual speakers alone. And if you're purchasing an S-Audio, what color are you getting? 
So let me know your thoughts in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We're talking about this in there. There's a lot of great people there, so come join us. There's a link for that in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.